That is an iconic picture and this an iconic quote from Martin Luther King Jr. Back in the day when integration wasn't as fashionable, he underwent the trauma and the humiliation and the loneliness which comes with being a pilgrim walking the lonesome byways toward the high road of freedom. He was a sit-inner before the sit-ins, a freedom rider before the freedom rides. And that right there will give you the best kind of chills on a cold day. And we're joined right now by our good friend, president of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, Bob Kendrick. And, you know, you've told these stories a million times, yeah. not just of Jackie, but, but of all of the great Negro Leaguers. And, of course, Jackie was. But I, I could see just with you watching that quote right there, that, that's moving to you too, right? Oh, absolutely, because you understand. You know, it fills you with tremendous pride, the courage that Jackie Robinson had. But it also Attention makes me think about those Negro League players and, and hearing Buck O'Neill say that they built that bridge across the chasms of prejudice. Mm -hmm. That bridge that Jackie Again, Robinson we'll and Larry Doby Monday, and others walked over. Yeah, no question about it. And I and I always I always think him. Well, we're seeing Brooklyn Dodgers right here, but it was only a couple of years before that that he was right here in Kansas City. Yes, yeah, and, and I think that's one of the things that we want people to understand. I think Joe, people think Jackie walked out of nowhere and just started playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers, but his real rookie season was here in Kansas City in 1945. And so before he was number 42, he wore number five for our great Kansas City Monarchs. And so it was our city and the Negro Leagues that gave America arguably its greatest hero in Jackie Robinson. What was it like for not just Jackie but all the Negro Leaguers playing here in Kansas City? I know that we hear all the time that 18th and Vine was a hopping area and it's coming oh, back yeah. now too by the way. Yes. But how comfortable of a place was this for those guys? Well, I think it was a little bit more comfortable here than it was as you were traveling some of the other highways and byways of the country. You have to remember that they were primarily isolated into their own community, so it was very comfortable in that world. But you have to remember, when Buck O'Neill came to Kansas City, he said, I knew I was coming to the heart of America. I never knew I was coming to the center of the universe. Mm. KC was jumping, man, and 18th and Vine was at the center. Jackie stayed at the Street Hotel that year year that he was here in Kansas City and he fell in love with everything that was iconic about Kansas City jazz barbecue and baseball uh, some things have never changed which is <laughs> a beautiful thing you know I, I was thinking about this earlier in the week I, I had heard that D Gordon and a couple yes. of the Mariners I think James Paxton, James Paxton uh -huh. came down first off I always like that too when it's um, all kinds of different guys coming by pitchers hitters black white i don't care who you are just to learn about the history how is that going do you still see that same interest as the younger players are starting to learn some things you know that some of the veterans have been over there before yeah I, I think even more so now joe because of the advent of social media mm. and so when the guys are at the museum they're posting their pictures on their instagram account or their twitter accounts and that is getting fed to their colleagues and so now it used to be me trying to reach the teams mm. and saying hey why don't you guys come to the negro leagues museum i'm getting more of those guys calling and saying can we come by and see the negro leagues baseball museum and it's always exciting i just got that call from tampa bay they're looking at bringing some guys when they come in may to play the royals and so that makes you feel good because no sport holds to its history the way our sport does yeah, that's that's amazing because I do remember that you, you you try to get some guys and you might get someone. So that that's really exciting. I, I also want to ask about where we're at right now. I mean, this is you know there, there's been a lot of tension in our country. Maybe in some ways there always has there there always will be over something. But I remember asking you last year about the Adam Jones incident, yes. and so. I remember, I think at the time you said there's still work to be oh, yes, done. Absolutely. Where are we right now? Absolutely. We still have a lot of work to do, particularly as we examine that race relations in our country. We thought we had moved beyond some of the things that we've seen here in recent times. But you know what, Joe? I think it magnifies the importance of what a Negro Leagues Museum represents. And for every athlete, no matter what color they are, when they come to visit the museum, 
they walk away, I think, with a greater appreciation for, number one, how good they have it in the major leagues today, but also a greater appreciation of the richness of this country. Mm -hmm. And so we are now setting the tenor for what you do to overcome these obstacles, because that's exactly what they did in the Negro Leagues. That's what makes the story so awe-inspiring and so compelling. Well, the only bad news today is that we will now not be seeing 42s on the field because they just postponed the game <laughs> while we were in the middle of talking. I heard Swanee. You, you know what? It might not be a bad thing today. Rescheduled for June 25th here at the K, Angels and the Royals. It will not be 20 degrees then. We hope. We, I, I think we're safe. <laughs> Bob. Regardless of weather, <laughs> glad you came in to share the insights as always. Oh, right, and Joel, thanks so much for having me, and uh, hopefully the rest of the people will enjoy a great Robinson Day.